Temeria is internally divided. As Constable of Temeria, I'm in no position to speak for the whole country regarding the Council and the Conclave. I am honored to speak on Temeria's behalf before this esteemed body. But I'm only the Constable. I cannot be sure some Baron won't cancel my signature in a week. What's your point, Constable? I lack my country's support regarding the Council and the Conclave. Neither do I intend to seek the Crown, for I've lesser blood in my veins. And, as a soldier, I know my place in the ranks. In recent weeks, we have deliberated extensively in Vizima on who is to succeed to the Temerian throne. Because the fate of Foltest's last child remains unknown, we could not reach an agreement. Unable to reconcile the interests of the esteemed Temerian houses, we have no choice but to divide the country into provinces along the barony's current borders. Noble attendees, I ask you to forget the words I uttered mere moments ago. Behold, Anaïs La Valette. Royal blood courses through her veins. She is the rightful heir to the Temerian throne. This child is a bastard. The girl will go to Vizima, where she will be presented to the nobility. She is yet too young to rule, but our laws of succession make provision for such cases. Do you think the child will ever sit on the Temerian throne? The Talus won't let her be harmed. We did all we could. To the matter at hand. The document describing the Charter of the Council and the Conclave is, as previously ascertained, an exact copy of the Charter found in the ruins on Thaned Island. The more important question relates to the Conclave and its power to designate royal advisers. Today, randomly chosen majors and sorceresses reside at many courts. However, in the time of the previous Conclave, such persons were carefully chosen. Why shouldn't we pick our own advisors? These individuals bear great responsibility, Your Majesty. The Conclave needs to be certain they are competent. And that they will keep the Conclave's interests in mind. Obviously, sire. The Conclave's chief interest is the well-being and prosperity of the Northern Kingdoms. The document has been signed by every member of the Conclave we have proposed as well as by all but one of the designated advisers. We await only Sheila de Tanserville's signature. Without our royal seals, you should be allowed to designate advisers to cowherds at most. That is true, Your Majesty. My kings, before you sign this document, please hear me out. Excellency, with all due respect, this matter does not concern Nilfgaard in the least. I am here at King Hensel's bidding. Will you deny my right to speak? What is the meaning of this? This man tried to kill me this morning. He attempted to take an Imperial envoy's life in your lands. I presume he was interrogated. He confessed. Faltest and Demiven died by his hand. He also revealed the identity of his employers. Sorceresses. They helped me with my assassinations. Speak on. The Lodge of Sorceresses sought to remove those rulers who acted against the will of mages. Lodge of Sorceresses? We have compiled a list. Philippa Eilhard, Margarita Loantil, Tris Merigold, Kira Metz, Francesca Finderbear, Ida Emin, and finally, Sheila de Tanzelin. To my deepest regret, two Nilfgaardian sorceresses 
the Siravar Anahid and Fringa the Vigo were also members. The Emperor will deal with them accordingly. Your Majesty, what's the meaning of this? Arrest them all. Your document will have to wait, honorable sorcerers. You have no right. Surrender now if you don't want another massacre, this time in Loch Nguyen. A court of law will reveal the traitors. You can't stop me, not you, not anyone else. If I have to, I will kill you. You're late. I've already managed to stabilize the portal. You've got nowhere to run. Sooner or later, somebody will find you. I prefer to leave on my own terms. Where's Letho? Sir Sempasis will tend to him, as she will to all the fools who get a hard on at the mere thought of burning a sorceress at the stake. Where is he? I don't know, fool. I've been looking for him since Foltest's assassination. Letho cheated all of us. We were deceived by his dull face and sluggish stare. Don't you understand? The Lodge sought a way to get rid of Demavend, that's true. He was a weak, volatile king. Edern would eventually choke to death under his rule. We chose the lesser evil. He had to be eliminated, and Letho happened to be at hand. Voltest? Henselt? We had nothing to do with that. After assassinating Demavend, Letho used our gold and magical support to find and meet Yorveth. The elf was to help him hide until the matter blew over, or so I thought. The Lodge did not condemn Foltest to die. Then who did? Nilfgaard. Letho is the King of Liars and Emperor of Traitors. From the start, he worked for the glory of the Great Sun and the White Flame dancing on the graves of his foes. He lied to everyone. Me, your vet, your stupid little Triss. And you. Got any evidence? A moment ago, I received a message from the Lodge's agent in Sintra. The Imperial Army is on the move. They're fording the Yoruga now. Do you think the North can defend itself in the current situation? And can you count on another miracle at Brenna? I don't know, but you made it all possible and you'll answer for that. The stigma of treason is yours for all time. We shall see. For no one will leave this city alive. No one will tell this story. Philippa controls the dragon. As soon as I disappear, it will turn the city into a flaming tomb. The dragon attacked Foltest's troops during the siege of Lavalette Castle. That hardly supports your tale. We did not control it then. We may have lost a battle, but the war is just beginning. You, however, shall not take part in it. This is your end. 
Witcher. Farewell! Something's not right! The diamond! Someone replace the diamond! This one's flawed! I'll be torn to bits! Geralt, remove it! The diamond! Remove the diamond! I'll give you anything you want!
How did it go with the dragon? It had a hard landing, impaled on a tree, but it's still alive. I don't kill dragons. The sorceresses could still use it. Roach, it may be one of the last living dragons. I can't simply slaughter it. All right, it's simple then. We need to get rid of Philippa. I'll leave you the honor. We'll get them, Witcher. The sorceresses have it coming. Radovid and the other kings already ordered firewood to be gathered for the pyres. What about the council and the conclave? I'd sooner expect the proclamation of an inquisitorial synod. Not all sorceresses deserve the stake. Oh, you can't make an omelette. Without breaking some eggs, I know. How is the future queen of Temeria? She's safe. She's even started to speak. Old Natalis tried to give her a doll. Know what she said? How would I? That she wants no more toys. She wants a sword. And to learn how to fight. She wants to avenge her father's death. What did you do? Gave her my special forces dagger. I'll teach her to defend herself. Natalis will teach her the art of war. She'll be a good queen. I can feel it. What about Letho? Did you capture him? Not entirely. Meaning? Letho awaits you in the former Temerian camp. He sent a messenger. Let's go. Tell me what happened here on the way. Pillage, rape, murder. Not necessarily in that order. Who on whom? The kings let their troops loose. They were supposed to deal with just the treacherous sorceresses, but they quickly decided every mage was a traitor. The soldiers vastly outnumbered the mages, who could do nothing with the magical blockade still in place throughout the city. When the rulers left the city surrounded by their armored cordons, soldiers in loose mobs went on a mage hunt. Most of the noted and powerful managed to flee. The others were hounded to death. I want to help. Their eyes need to be opened. They must see. They're dead. I am too. But I opened my eyes and saw... <laughs> what did you see? Peace Summit. Peace Summit. Peace Summit. The world's gone mad. Let's get out of here. Stop. I heard something. There he is! Radovid wants his head! For the eternal fire! For the sacred truth! What about the Nilf Guardians? They ran like hell. That's no rumor. From Sheila, she was surprisingly knowledgeable. If it was the Nilf Guardians, then war's inevitable. Let's end this. No, Roach. I'm going alone. Why, Geralt? Take care of Triss. Wait for me at the city gate. If I'm not back within the hour, leave without me. But... Just do it, Roach. Please. I need to deal with this alone. Are you all right? Yes. He saved me from the Nilf Guardians. And defended me from the troops. Time to end this. Roach is waiting. I'll join you soon. Geralt, he knows a lot. I know, Triss. That's why we need to talk. 
Don't get killed, Witcher. I won't. Took you a while? Is that bobble from Sheila's megascope? Mm-hmm. My final prank. I switched the diamonds. The one in the megascope has a flaw, minute, but just large enough to warp the teleport. The Emperor's magic theorists assured me the effect would be spectacular. Oh, it was. Good. Had she lived, she would have suffered more intensely and much longer. She helped me quite a bit, through naivety and pride. I would not have gotten far without her. Hmm. So, ready to lay your cards out on the table? No matter the game, there comes a point when all the players need to show their cards. I love that moment. But first... Vodka. I only drink with friends. What about old acquaintances, eh? <sighs> Recovered your memory yet? Not entirely. Remember how we first met? Yeah, I saved your life. Couldn't think of a nicer way to pay me back? Frankly, I couldn't. I mean, taking care of another man's woman, Yennefer. I can't fathom what you saw in her, but I suppose there's no accounting for taste. The Winter Solstice 1270. Middenvern, the Night of Magic. Letho wasn't lying, the hunt had stopped. At the hanged man's tree, the spectral riders selected from among those they had taken. Yennefer was among them. A wraith cannot be killed, only driven away. Every witcher knows that. Yet the riders fell beneath the blows of our witcher's blades. Crimson blood flowed from under their dead men's armor. We could not kill them all. They were simply too many. A stalemate. He was different from all other elves. There was no shame in his gaze. He had never suffered persecution. He had endured no massacres. Humans had not taken his land. This elf was not of this world. He was an invader. We struck a deal. My soul for that of Yennefer. He agreed without hesitation. Back with me, friend. Got the feeling you left for a minute. Memories. I remember the hanged man's tree and the wild hunt. I remember the exchange. Me for Yennefer. So, cards out on the table. Unless you chase me all that way just to kill me. I'm done talking. Let's finish this. Wanna fight? Any vodka left in that bottle? A swig apiece. Here. The Imperial Army is probably crossing the Yoruga as we speak. Pure pandemonium will ensue. The North's finished. Time to go south, where the good life awaits. You're a fool, Letho. Both you and your Emperor are forgetting one thing. Misfortune brings people together. Very shortly, the North could be united like never before, thanks to you. But that's just not my concern anymore. I'm not your foe. I never was. Let me walk away and I will. You'll never see me again. Force me to fight, and this time I'll kill you. Time to fight. Ready? As I'll ever be. You fear death? Stop whining and fight. What does it feel like to be almost dead? Said fight. Uh, uh, uh. 
And they're sharp. I'd better. I can tell already. Of course you can. You tire quickly. I'm tired of your talking. I don't want to kill you. And I'll kill you, gladly. You're nowhere near my level. Of course not. I'm no Kingslayer. I've had enough of this dance. Goodbye, Geralt. The Witcher had traveled far and wide in search of the Kingslayers. In Flotsam, he slew Bernard Lerito, but few mourned for the Commandant. Flotsam remained to Marion, while command of the garrison in town went to a Vizima noble, a sworn enemy of Kedwin and an avid angler. To this day, folk gather round bonfires in Lobenden to hear of the Witcher's deeds. The Witcher witnessed a great Kedwini victory in Edern, at Vergen, Hensel's army crushed Saskia the Dragonslayer's motley force, ending the springtime of races. Soldiers of the Unicorn swarmed over the Pontar Valley. As it had before, powerful Kedwen swallowed Upper Edern whole. Yet subsequent events would render Hensel's triumph short-lived. With Fultest slain, Temeria's barons began to vie for the throne. 
Many dreamt of donning the crown, yet none could assemble the allies required to snatch it. The kingdom's last hope, as it teetered at the edge of civil war, lay in little Anais. Natalis was named regent and ruled the land, yet the girl was the living symbol of the realm's salvaged unity. A tempest descended on the north, at least partly the work of manipulative mages. It seemed the turmoil in Temeria, Edern, and Kedwin would benefit them most. Common folk turned against sorceresses and all magic freaks, witchers included. Castles that had hitherto welcomed mavens of the magic arts now shut their gates to any who sought shelter there. A witch hunt ensued. It was a time of great uncertainty, of rape accomplished by royal decree. Yet as troubled as the day seemed, we who had in some way shaped the world's fate finally received some respite. Zoltan resumed the quest for his beloved's hand, and I laid my head in the laps of the muses. Who could have known this tempest which had ravaged the north was but a harbinger of darker days, and the preamble to an entirely new tale of Geralt of Rivia.